Talker here. It is Friday, Saturday, Friday, 18th of September. We're going to take a look at the new bike town. So these are the e-bikes that launched back on the 8th. They're finally back in service now that the air quality has gotten better. So if you've taken a bike town before, these look pretty different other than the orange. Controls are about the same. You still have a twist belt there on the left. And you do have disc brakes on both sides. The basket is this new kind of low profile sort of deal that now has a bungee cord, which is slightly tricky to get back into place. If you notice, there's a QR code on here. This is the battery pack, and the reason why there's a QR code is the keypad's gone. So those god-awful keypads that never work are finally gone, and instead you rent these by scanning the QR code, or if you're on the bike town for all program, they will send you a key card. If you had one of the old key cards, unfortunately, it does not work. You can check the battery on these before you take off. It just pulsates the number of bars that it has. This is where you have your lock, unlock, ring, and everything. And you can take a look at the range on these inside both the Bike Town and Lift app. Seats on these are new. They do have a nice hole in the middle here now, which definitely helps with drainage considering the rain we just got. You do still have a numbered seat. It now starts at zero, and it looks like they've kind of redesigned these so you can't lock a bike seat all the way to itself. Um, however, if you take a look, these aren't grooved anymore, so the seat does spin around as much as you want it now. I'm not a huge fan of that. I liked being able to lock it into one position. Another thing you do want to take note is that because these do start at zero, Whatever number you were used to on the old bikes is probably not the number you want on these. I used to be a four. I'm slightly lower than a four now because it was too high. So, other than that, they're about the same. You still have, of course, your kickstand there. Rear lights, which I have no idea how good they are because I haven't been able to see one of these at night. In the front, you do still have a reflect uh, reflector and light there in the front another reflector under the basket and the u-lock is gone you have this giant thick cable now that kind of looks like a headphone cable once it's unlocked so if i can get cell service for once let's take this out and go for a ride So, we got our bike. As you can see, I did have to move to a station that actually had cell coverage. But, we're gonna take this up the bridge.
so these are still pretty heavy compared to the old bikes these are approximately 75 pounds and if you can see where my right hand is where the gear shifter was you now have what's called an infinity gear and so what you want to do when you get on the telecom like this is twist up that's why there's a bike on a hill thing there one thing to warn you about is the bike will brake on its own if you're using the electric assist as you start to go over the bridge. And the reason for that is the city of Portland has a 20 mile an hour speed limit and on the bridge. So the E is without any kind of warning. But that is a hell of a lot easier to get up than what it used to be. These things, if you sneeze, they will go. They are a tremendous improvement. While we wait on the train to go here, as you might be able to see the lights under the basket, it's plenty bright. For the rear, the brake light actually blinks now instead of stays solid. We're gonna go back up the other side. And so as you might have heard, the whining stopped, and that's because I hit 20 miles an hour. And so it stops you from going above that in parks and areas. We're gonna take this into the city and see if it does it there as well. And the way we're gonna do that is right over there. We're gonna go down to South River Parkway and uh, try to go up to PSU and see how this does with the crazy hill that is South Harrison Street. thing I should note is that making this video is costing me money because if you have the annual membership these are 10 cents a minute you do not get 90 minutes of free credit anymore so uh, please watch those ads because the ad revenue is gonna pay for this Eventually, 
this should realize that I'm away from the waterfront park. And I really hope release the limiter, because otherwise going up this hill is going to suck. Okay, good. It does realize that I am away from the park. And my limiter is off again. going to be what I call the hill practical exam. If this doesn't suck completely getting up Harrison Street, these are going to be a huge improvement. And this is going to be a little bit dodgy of a test because Harrison becomes a Shero Street. This bike lane only lasts until Lido Parkway. But so far, I would say so good. It would just be uh, nice if all these wood chip bags weren't here in the way. Now another thing to note with these bikes while we wait here is because it's an electric assist you do need to give these a bit more oomph to get going than before. I didn't realize that the first time it nearly wiped out. So it was like, oh this should be easy. No. No, you really need to kick off. Because it takes a few minutes for that e assist to kick in. All right, here we go. All right, already, this is drastically improved. The e-assist definitely works. That, that was simple. Oh my God, these work. These actually do what they're supposed to do. Hallelujah. This is where we're going to get a bit uh, dicey. Oh, shit. Uh, as I said, dicey. I knew that was going to happen, which is why I stayed over by the curb. This is such a pain in the ass connection to make. So you think Portland, oh, our bike infrastructure is great. It's great until it abruptly ends. Which it is very good at doing. Oh man, this is really bad pavement. Oh my god. There is uh, not a safe way to connect to PSU right now. Come on, Pebont, you can do better than that. So 
that's another dicey thing with these is with the e assist you do need to think about what you're going to be running over because yeah if i can still wipe out on the streetcar tracks you can too so please do not ride in tracks unless you absolutely know what you are doing and it's only to make a turn even then it's preferred that you don't So we're going to cut through PSU here to get into downtown. Lights, camera, action. So while we're in PSU's campus, one thing I should note is this is no longer what was previously known as a super hub. It is no longer free to lock these up just anywhere along the Portland State University campus. It is $1 to lock a bike to a public hub. This is such a crazy connection here again. Alright, so we're just going to kind of cruise through downtown for a little here and see how we go. Oh, and another thing I should actually note is you cannot lock these inside of the South Park blocks. In fact, you cannot lock these in any park anymore. That is considered out of bounds and you will be charged a $25 so, if you were thinking about taking one of these to a park, uh, know where your public bike parking is that is not inside the park. I guess Jeep is just going to stop in the middle of the bus lane. Okay. So, it's probably because I'm going downhill and braking a lot, but I'm not noticing the limiter kicking in down here like I would have expected to have happen. I guess you have to be inside the park proper or the cell coverage down here is bad enough that it doesn't realize I'm in the south park blocks. Lots of plausibilities. So we're coming up on Director Park soon. That's not a passing lane. All right, there's Director Park. We're gonna head down to Nido Parkway. I have a better idea. Slightly better idea. If I can figure out how to make this work, yeah. 
I have an idea. We're gonna go up 4th Avenue, because that's got a hill. And I want to go up 4th Avenue to test out that E-assist again. Fourth Avenue, and eventually I will get a bike lane. <sighs> so, pro tip while you're on the Portland Transit Mall, these lights are timed for exactly 12 and a half miles an hour. If you get a green light going that, you'll get them green all the way down. pavement I really don't like because it is so angled. So that's City Hall. And here's my bike lane finally. Right in time for probably where I'm going to turn off honestly. That's really shit design, Peabot. <sighs> yeah, actually, I'm gonna take this up to the orange line and make my connections that way. All right, we're gonna do a new route for me. down Harrison again, which is what we came up, but I want to go a little further. Test out the e-pedal some more. And as you can see, yes, this is one of the few areas you can legally ride on the sidewalk in downtown. It's kind of weird but you're actually allowed to do that. <clears throat> oh, here comes car two. Oh, it's got the fun blinking lights. Nice as this bike lane is, uh, it would be nicer if it were flat and protected and not a very obvious afterthought because to be honest with you, I feel a hell of a lot more safer in the travel lane for cars than I do with this. Alright, so 
this is where we're going to do something different to Harbor to Lincoln. All right, so this is new for me. What we're going to do is take this to get back down to Harrison. And there's my bike marker. So either the hill up fourth isn't as bad as I remember it, I rented one that's got 20 miles of range. The e assist on these things is incredible. And we're going to stop because I know that's going to change to red. this is going to be really cool that we kind of get to be trimet a little here i thought that was the lane but no this is actually the lane so this is going to be interesting because if i pull up to this far enough i should get a blue call light or that light's burnt out and i get it immediately we're going to turn down here. Oh man, this is tight. And we're going to use this to get back on to uh, South Harrison Street. I wonder if I do actually have to push the walk button. What do we think? Hit the walk button? Let's hit the walk button. Yep. So. That's a TriMet fail right there. There's no call loop for the bike once you actually get to that bike box. Radio. Ugh. So, we're gonna go down this way. until we get to Harrison, and we're going to turn at Harrison. Which is this intersection right here. Which, if I had to guess, because they're widening this sidewalk here to begin with, these uh, new signals that are here, one of them is probably going to be a bike signal. when better Nido is done that they come up with a better connection than that because that's pretty crap. Oh, you can smell streetcar art here. Smells like a barbecue. Or that might actually be somebody grilling. So this is car two here, and this is kind of actually a cool car in the fleet because those blinking lights are part of a lighting trial that were installed because people were complaining the train wasn't visible enough. I say those new lights are more than visible. They're really bright.
this is going to be a semi-tricky connection here because I actually want to go straight. This is another cool car here. This is car 21 with the progressive pride flag. All right, this is gonna be moderately dodgy, this. If I'm being honest, I probably should have used the crosswalk there, but that's uh, kind of a pain of a connection to make. Just because we can, we're going to go up the bridge one more time. Because why not? Let's really punt this to the test. Oh, that's a very interesting line to follow. He wants me to make a lift by going right. Okay. How incredibly Piedmont. <laughs> Eventually this will click over. I guess it was supposed to be over there. Ah, uh, well, bad design. Now there's my limiter again. It knows I'm on the bridge. And I get a limit of 20. Well, that's no matter. Because 20 uphill is better than 3. I completely forgot to start a cycle. A series start an outdoor cycle. Whoops. today. So we're going to 
turn right this time. Oh, they've got the Razor scooters. Probably going in for the night. And because I'm at the waterfront, this should limit me to 20 again. Is where I do need to swing very wide now to actually make that turn because of the new turning radius on these. Oh yeah, that'll get some Wally going. Bike 126. Woohoo! Rats, the limiter kicked in this time. Probably because they shifted. Oh. I'm going to be feeling this in the knees tomorrow. Regenerative braking. 